Hi, I am Michael Giovanni and welcome back to my channel. An irrigation system like this costs over 200 euros, but what if I told you that we can build it for as little as 30 euros? I think it has happened to everyone to live for vacation leaving the plants on our balcony without anyone to water them. The project we are going to see today can solve this problem, allowing us to water our plants in a completely automated way, and even controlling the system remotely from our mobile phone. And now you are probably thinking, hey, this is a standard garden irrigation system. Actually, no, because a normal irrigation system requires having a tap on our balcony from which to get water. The system we are going to see today works in a completely autonomous way, because it uses a container from which it takes water, and a pump to distribute it to the plants. Of course, systems like this can be found on the market, but once I saw the cost, I said, I can build this my own for way cheaper. My system, however, also has many additional features, including the ability to control watering remotely from a mobile phone, and a sensor that can measure the water level, which allows us to keep an eye on how much water is left even when we are away from home. As icing on the cake, I also added a button on the control unit to start watering, and some LEDs to indicate the water level and pump operation. All this at a very low price, of just 30 euros versus the over 200 euros of the commercially available system. But now let's get started! This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a professional custom printed circuit board manufacturer that makes high quality PCBs from 1 to 8 layers starting at just 2 dollars. JLCPCB also offers many other services, including 3D printing with different technologies and materials and assembly of the components on the PCB, so that we have it ready to use in our projects right away. JLCPCB is easy to use, affordable and reliable. This can be immediately seen in the ordering process, which is very simple. Just upload your Gerber files and select different parameters to get an instant quote and proceed with the purchase. Plus, by going through the link in the video description, new users can get a coupon code for $70 off. The key component for this project is a pump. The pump will be used to carry water from the container to the different plants, using some hoses. The pump I chose runs on 12 volts, and once I put it in the water and connected it to my bench power supply, it started to work great, with way more water flow than I was expecting. In addition to the pump, we need a container in which to put the water. As a water container, we can use pretty much anything, but obviously the larger it is and the more the system will be able to run on its own. For my project, I chose this plastic container, which is cheap, very durable and holds about 30 liters of water. The container I chose also has a lid, which is very useful to prevent the water from evaporating and to prevent the mosquitoes from choosing it as their new home. For a first test, I connected the hose to the output of the pump and placed it at the bottom of the container. To get the hose and power cable out, I drilled the hole on the top edge. Now we need to get the water coming out of the pump to the plants. To do this I chose to use some drippers, along with their hose and some fittings. With a triple outlet fitting I connected two drippers to a single pipe, which I connected to the one coming from the pump. The two drippers will be used to water the two plants that I have on my balcony, and I know I'm much better at electronics than I am at gardening. Anyway, for this test I am only watering two plants, but of course nothing prevents us from expanding the system to add more. Once the system was ready, I powered up the pump, and everything worked flawlessly, so I could move on to the electronic part. Until now we have always turned the pump on and off manually, but a proper irrigation system needs a way to control the pump automatically. To do this I chose to use an ESP32 board. I chose this module because it has a Wi-Fi connection, which allows us to connect it to a network to control the pump remotely, for example from a mobile phone. Along with the SP32 we need a MOSFET, 
which will allow us to control the pump which consumes almost 400 mA directly from a pin on the SP32. Around the MOSFET I created a very simple circuit on a piece of perford, adding two resistors, a flyback diode and screw terminals for the 12V power supply and for the pump. I made the connections following the schematic, also adding two jumpers connectors to connect one pin of the SP32 and GND. As a last minute addition I also put an LED on the board, which will be useful to see when the pump is on. Before testing the circuit we need to program the SP32. To connect the SP32 to Home Assistant via Wi-Fi I chose to use the ESP Home integration. The code is very simple, and once the configuration was complete I could control the pump from Home Assistant using the app on my phone. And after a few tests the control circuit for the pump worked perfectly. And just like that we already have a complete irrigation system that we can control from Home Assistant. Plus by creating an automation in Home Assistant we can set a time at which to turn the pump on and off, making our rotating system fully automatic. It is at this point however that I had a doubt. What happens if the water in the container runs out? Knowing me I would always forget to check the water level to possibly refill the container. And if the water runs out the pump continues to run dry, which can destroy it. So I came up with two additional features. When the water runs out the pump does not activate, and at the same time a notification is sent to my mobile phone. At the moment however the system does not know how much water is left in the container, so first I needed a sensor that could measure the water level. To do this I chose to use an ultrasonic sensor, which is able to measure the distance from an object. My idea is that by placing it on top of the container we can measure the distance between the sensor and the surface of the water, and therefore know how much water is left. At first I had chosen this sensor, with only one transducer connected to its board. In order to test it I 3D printed the holder for the sensor and connected it to an Arduino so that I could see the measured values on the serial monitor. Once mounted the sensor appeared to work just fine, until I picked up the tape measure and realized that the measurement was completely wrong. After some research I realized that this sensor detects a minimum distance of 25 cm, and in fact beyond that distance it gives no problem. After a little more research I found a different sensor, which seems to be able to measure distances as little as 2 cm. This sensor has two separate transducers for transmitting and receiving, which unlike other similar sensors are waterproof. To mount the sensor I drilled two holes in the lid of the container, so that it was oriented toward the surface of the water. To connect the sensor we need a 4-pin cable for plus 5V reception, transmission and GND. Obviously the sensor circuit must be protected from rain, and to do this I designed and 3D printed this part. I ran the cable through a cable gland, and secured the sensor with some glue. At this point I could mount the sensor, using 4 M3 screws. After doing another test the sensor was finally working, so I could go on with the rest of the project. The ultrasonic sensor has to be connected together with the pump to a control unit with the SP32. First I took care of the design of the control unit, and when I was satisfied I sent it to the 3D printer. The control unit is made from a base onto which we can screw the front panel. For the graphics on the front panel I tried printing them in a different color by posing the print and changing the filament, and I must say they turned out really well. On the panel we are going to put some LEDs to indicate the water level and status of the pump, and a button to start watering. The LEDs are simply pressed into the holes on the panel, and then soldered onto a piece of stripboard with the negative in common. To connect the LEDs and the button to the main board I used two JST connectors, a 6-pin one for the LEDs and a 2-pin one for the button. In the three holes on the side of the control unit I mounted some cable glands, which give the whole thing a way more professional look. 
At this point I got a piece of perford onto which I shouldered the SP32. Then the board will be divided into several parts. We have the part that deals with controlling the pump, the connection of the ultrasonic sensor, the part that powers the circuit, and the connection of the LEDs and the button. For the pump control part I reported on this board the circuit with the MOSFET that we have seen before. The ultrasonic sensor uses two pins, for echo and trigger. To connect it to the SP32 we wouldn't need any additional components, except that the sensor runs on 5V, while on the SP32 pins we have at most 3.3V. So I added a level converter to the board, which can bring the signals from 3.3 to 5V and vice versa. The pump will be powered at 12V, so to get the 5V needed by the SP32 I chose to use this small voltage regulator, which I soldered onto the board. To connect the power supply, the pump and the ultrasonic sensor I used the screw terminals, and my obsession with precision forced me to also make a label that in the end no one is ever going to see. Each one of the LEDs will be connected to one pin of the SP32 with a resistor, while the button will be connected directly between one pin of the SP32 and GND. Now that all the components were assembled I made the connections under the board, and after a few hours of work here is the result. And now that the board was done I had to deal with writing the software. So I updated the ESP Home code to integrate the new features we added, including the ultrasonic sensor and the front panel with the button and LEDs. Writing the code to make all the different parts work together was not easy, especially in the ESP Home language, but the good news is that you don't have to do it, because as always in the description I leave you the code and configuration of Home Assistant, along with the files to 3D print and wiring diagrams. Now I could finish the project by mounting the board in the control box. The LEDs and the button on the front panel can be connected to the board with their connectors, and to secure the front panel with screws I put some M3 threaded inserts at the four corners of the box. Before closing the panel however I had to make the last connections. So I connected the pump to the two output terminals, and the four wires of the ultrasonic sensor to their respective terminals. To power the system I connected two wires to the input terminals on the board, and at the other end I mounted the connector for the 12V power supply. Once the connections were done I could close the cover of the control unit, and the last thing to do was to mount it on one side of the water container. To do this I had prepared the two threaded inserts on the back of the control unit, which allowed me to secure it using two screws and two 3D printed spacers. As always it was finally time to plug in power. Immediately the LEDs on the panel lit up indicating the water level, and I'm sure that to the more nerdy people they will remind the VU meter on an audio mixer. On the Home Assistant app we can set a watering time, in this case 10 minutes, and press start. After 10 minutes the pump stops, but if you want to stop it earlier we can use the stop button. To start watering we can also press the button on the controller, and the time used will always be the time set in Home Assistant. The real game changer however is the ultrasonic sensor, which not only shows us the water level on the app but also stops the pump if the water level is below a certain value that we can set from Home Assistant. The flashing blue LED is used to indicate if the water level is too low, but with a simple automation we can also receive a notification on our mobile phone. Using automations we can also set a time at which to start watering, and to monitor the whole system I also created this nice dashboard in Home Assistant. In the end we have a smart irrigation system that is perfect for our balcony. And so this video comes to an end, and as always I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more projects like this check out my channel and maybe subscribe. Bye and we will see at the next video.